You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. as Roller Martin Unfiltered by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Yesterday, Alabama. Today, Missouri. Both following in the footsteps of Ohio and Georgia. Passing restrictive abortion bills. The question is, what happens next? What they're doing is they want the Supreme Court to weigh in on these cases in a desperate way. The, cons the white conservative evangelicals always wanted Roe v. Wade to be overturned since it was enacted in 1973. And by, as a result of these laws, they are hoping the Supreme Court will hear one of these laws and take it up. The question is, what is going to happen legally? Joining us right now is Janice Mathis, Executive Director for the National Council of Negro Women. Also on our panel, we have Dr. Greg Carr, Chair of the Department of Afro-American Studies, Howard University. We also have, of course, Erica Savage-Wilson, host Savage Politics Podcast, and Mustafa Santiago Ali, former Senior Advisor for the Environmental Justice at the EPA. Janice, I want to go to you. You're a lawyer as well. Uh, this is what they have been gearing up for quite some time. I have been telling black people that these battles were happening on the state level uh, when you saw what took place in 2010 uh, with uh, Democrats uh, losing big on the congressional level. They also lost significant seats on the state level, gubernatorial mansions and state legislatures. Now we're seeing it. We saw Alec. We saw Stand Your Ground. We saw voter ID bill. But this issue here is one uh, that is tops. And so Alabama, Missouri, Georgia, Ohio, uh, we can expect to see others. They want to force the Supreme Court with five conservative justices to strike down Roe v. Wade. I think you have to go back to really understand this, Roland, go back to Anthony Kennedy's replacement. Anthony Kennedy was a swing vote. He was the pivot point around He was conservative, which, but, but he could pivot. moderate, yes. He could pivot depending on what the issue was. This, his appointment, or the, his replacement, has now made it 5-4 in the other direction. And if Roberts does not vote to save Roe, it's probably gone. I think, though, it's important to note that maybe Alabama went too far. The law is so extreme that the court may be tempted to, for the reputation of the court's sake, not for the not because they want to save women or save health care, right. but because when you start talking about jailing doctors and doctors and physicians who perform abortions can get decades in prison, now you've gone what we would call in the law overbroad. Hell, Pat Robertson. Say you've done okay. too much. When Pat Robertson says you've gone too far, then you've gone too damn. far. Damn. Of all people. And so we'll just see. Of course, now, there have been other instances where the court was willing to go be too far. Bush v. Gore. They went too far then. People, I never shall forget, we were on the phone, smart lawyers telling me, oh, no, the Supreme Court will never take that case up because the Supreme Court doesn't side local election matters. Mm. But they decided that one. So it's And limited their ruling the just to that Said case. it has no presidential value. Erica, we'll see. Erica, the thing that, 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 that was interesting about this, this whole back and forth, if you look at public opinion, a majority of Americans say leave Roe v. Wade where it is. People view this as a personal decision. Yeah. When you look at Alabama, not just jailing uh, doctors, but literally uh, refusing to even have uh, uh, rape or incest included in that. You have people out there, conservatives like Matt Walsh and others, uh, who have been getting blasted on social media yeah. saying, how dare you can be for this. I've had people who are criticizing me because I've said, oh, how can you call yourselves pro-life but you support the death penalty? Right. Uh, and then, of course, uh, some conservative, uh, they retweeted, and so all these uh, trolls start coming at me, and I said, I'm sorry, I'm just repeating what the Catholic Church said. But the, the, the opinion of the Catholic Church is they are absolutely against abortion, mm -hmm. but they're absolutely against the death penalty. Right. And what you have here is you have people who call themselves pro-life, but in fact, uh, they're not pro-life because they got no problem putting folks to death. Absolutely. And then they absolutely have no problem with oppressing black and brown people. So the way that we look at it broadly is to say that um, this is uh, about women's bodies, but then at the same time, who are the people that we are not only electing, but then that we are also funding their campaigns that do stand with those people who 
really are um, scared of the browning of America. Uh, they do want to have some sense of control over population as well to ensure that um, the majority that is rising doesn't rise um, as they as, as it is um, off, um, it has been reported to um, to raise. And so, for me, I think that this is really an opportunity um, for everyone to get more involved with state legislators, um, and then also to understand that though these bills have been passed at the House levels um, in the states, that they have not been passed overall broadly. So there is still time for people to engage, for people to fund the ACLU and other organizations that are taking these um, states, that are taking um, these people to task, that are really trying to take away um, precedence that's been set for over 40 years now. Greg Carr, the, the, what people don't understand is that Republicans love to talk about small government, getting government out of our lives. But the reality is these are the same people in Alabama who passed a law that says city councils cannot take down Confederate statues. Mm -hmm. Same thing in North Carolina, same thing in Virginia. And so I call, uh, all, even on issues like this, uh, my pastor calls it situational ethics. They have situational faith. They have, they have situ situ situational values. Where again, it's always, oh, no, no, it's local, local, local until we have power. And then we're going to uh, make it perfectly clear that since we have power, we're going to tell y'all what to do. Yes, uh, the scholar Marimba Ani refers to it as a rhetorical ethic. They just say anything to get what they're, what they're after. Uh, they're going to push this federal experiment called the United States of America until it finally breaks. That's what's going to happen. John Roberts has a decision to make. I agree with you, uh, Jans. Uh, is there going to be ju judicial legitimacy for the federal judiciary? Well, they've already picked up almost a quarter of all the lower court federal judges in the past two years. Is there going to be respect for a federal judiciary nationwide, or are they going to go for this paragraph? This is absolutely coordinated. You mentioned ALEC. This is being coordinated. Uh, of course, Alabama is the overreach. They're going to test the outer limits. But we'll know as soon as Monday whether or not they're going to hear the challenge to this Indiana law, uh, which has a couple of troublesome uh, pr uh, provisions, and you got one coming up from Louisiana, they'll certainly probably hear this. You only need four votes for, on the court to allow to them to hear a case. They set their own docket. Justice McConnell, also known as Neil Gorsuch, uh, is in a, a trio with Alito and, and Clarence Thomas, who said recently that uh, there, there are two bad decisions, Roe versus Wade and Dred Scott. So this is about stare decisis as well. This is set law, 50 years. If you attack this, John Roberts is going to have to choose. Either he's going to go with the theocracy of Mike Pence and the other rhetorical eth ethicists, or they're going to create a situation where this country is going to fraction beyond recognition because some states you're going to be able to terminate a pregnancy and others you won't, and then you're going to see states saying, you turn that mega bus around from Georgia, you're not coming into Virginia to terminate your pregnancy. Well, in fact, Mustafa, Georgia's law mm -hmm. penalizing you if you cross state lines. All right, folks, back to that whole mark unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, inviting you to come out swinging and join me for a day of golf at the University for Parents Golf Tournament on Saturday, June 22nd in Southwest Atlanta's Wolf Creek Golf Course. It's a golf tournament with a purpose, a fundraiser for the University for Parents, a program designed to empower parent learners through education, inspiration, and support. This is all tied to Susan Taylor's uh, mentoring program, National Cares Mentoring Program. Now, when you empower the parents, you also empower the children as well. The location of the tournament is 3000 Union Road, and the shotgun start time is 9 a.m. To register, go to www.u, letter U for parents.org, letter U for parents.org. Hey guys, tomorrow, uh, do me a favor when we do this here, uh, put the uh, website at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, it's a little small on that flyer. For more information, call 770-316-3487, 770-316-3487. And I certainly hope to see you there. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered.